the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. America just knew the tale of how our national <coughs> anthem came to be. I think they would stand as straight as these Marines behind me with their hands over their hearts and sing this song to the world. I want to tell you very briefly the story behind it, and you may know some of it, but you may not know the entire story of how our national anthem came to be. It starts with a 35-year-old lawyer in Baltimore, year 1814. For two years, America had been locked in a vicious con uh, conflict with Great Britain. It became known as the War of 1812. And for two years, there was indeterminate skirmishes along the way. No side gained the upper hand until 1814 the British invaded Washington, D.C., burnt the White House and other important government buildings, and then they decided to march to Baltimore, the third most populous city at that time, at a strategic port town, to capture that town and force the United States of America into surrender. Along the way, they captured prisoners, and when they got to uh, Baltimore, they put these American prisoners in, a, in a, uh, a fleet of battleships out there in the harbor. There was a roughly 16 to 20 battleships, and there they stayed for, they didn't know how long they would be there. One of those prisoners' name was Dr. William Beans. He was a prominent physician in Baltimore. He had many influential friends who went to this young lawyer I was just telling you about and asked this lawyer to see if he could negotiate for the release of Dr. Beans. The young lawyer's name was Francis Scott Key. And with a government official by his side, they rode out to one of the British warships where Dr. Beans was imprisoned. And for an entire week, they negotiated for his release. They finally were successful. But on the day that he negotiated this man's freedom. The British detained them because he learned that the very next day, the British fleet was going to unleash hell and fury on the only thing standing between them and the city of Baltimore, a fort called Fort McHenry, manned by only a thousand soldiers. Well, the bombardment began on September 13, 1814. The warships had heavy cannon and they had rockets and they were firing into the fort. For hours, they bombarded Fort McHenry. It was really a one-sided battle because the men at Fort McHenry had inferior weaponry. They could not return fire. So the British pounded this fort all morning, all afternoon, all evening into the wee hours of the next morning. Can you imagine Francis Scott Key pacing back and forth on that warship, perhaps with a spyglass in his hand, to see if the American flag was still flying. And undoubtedly, when the rockets were bursting in the air, he saw that the flag was still flying, but he didn't know how much longer these men could hold out. Could you imagine the anxiety and the trepidation of the American prisoners on the British warships, wondering if the flag would still be there the next morning? Perhaps they were asking each other, do you think the flag is still there? you think the stars and stripes are still waving in the breeze? They would be answered the next morning when the mist of the sea rose, the, the smoke of the battle cleared away, and there she waved. The commander of Fort McHenry took down the small garrison flag at the fort, and he replaced it with a 30-foot by 42-foot 
American flag to announce to the British, to America, and to the whole world that the United States of America was still standing. The United States of America had not yielded. The British gave up. They said this is too costly. They withdrew from the harbor and surrendered shortly afterwards. America had won another decisive war. Francis Scott Key was so inspired by this event that when he got off the warship, he took quill and paper and hastily wrote out a poem. It had several stanzas to it. He entitled it, In Defense of Fort McHenry. Thank God it was renamed <laughs> to the Star Spangled Banner and set to stirring music. Our national anthem was penned by Francis Scott Key in commemoration of the United States of America not yielding to this British bombardment. So, in honor of our great flag, in tribute to our braved armed forces who have valiantly defended the freedoms of our country, and in recognition and reverence of Almighty God, who is the ultimate source of our rights and freedoms, Let's stand as we sing our national anthem in honor of the flag <coughs> and of America. seated and I'm going to introduce the uh, color guard and the drummers here in a minute. My name is Mark Winter and uh, they named a street after me here called Winter Park Drive. We live at 6241 Winter Park Drive. My wife is here. Wave, Laura. And we've been residents here for about uh, seven, seven and a half years and we love hometown. Who loves hometown? Yeah. Greatest neighborhood ever. 
I want to welcome our hometown residents to our first Flag Day celebration here to celebrate our beautiful United States flag. And to introduce also to, uh, to you the new hometown flag, mm -hmm. Flying Under Old Glory. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it is pretty nice. And this has been a three-year project and a uh, lot of persistence to get this flag. And we are very excited. We also have, you know, when you fly the flag at night, you're supposed to light it up, right? We have some new permanent lights that will be shining 24-7 on the Stars and Stripes. I'm excited about that. Are you? Okay, let me uh, introduce our Marine Corps Color Guard, Sergeant Justin Cole, Sergeant Henry Talon, Sergeant Carl Speck, and Sergeant Antoine Weaver. Let's hear it for our mighty Marines. We love the Army too and the Navy and the Air Force, and we're gonna we're going to recognize those later. Uh, we also had the Birdville Senior High School Mighty Hawk Band members, Alfredo Guerrero, Jordan Proper. Did I say his name right? Proper. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Carol Senior High School Dragon Band members, Michael Brewer and Michael Dagnuski. Also, Tracy Flores, the daughter of Bill and Beverly Hunt. Beverly's right over here. Say hi to Beverly. She's the counselor at Carroll Senior High School, and she assisted in getting our snare drummers and recruiting the Marine Corps Color Guard. So let's give Tracy a hand. I want to give you a uh, quick rundown of how we came to celebrate Flag Day, and I hope you have your flags out. And you really, as you're going to learn in a minute, Flag Day is just one day uh, of uh, this week where we're supposed to fly our flags, or we can. The 4th of July is traditionally celebrated as America's birthday, but the idea of an annual day specifically celebrating the flag is believed to have first originated in 1885. Yeah. A school teacher arranged for his pupils to observe June 14th, which was the 108th anniversary of the official adoption of the Stars and Stripes as flag birthday. Through the years, others took up the idea and held events to celebrate the flag. Parades, singing of patriotic songs, and addresses were delivered. After three decades of state and local celebrations, Flag Day, the anniversary of the flag resolution of 1777 by the Second Continental Congress, was officially established by the proclamation of President Woodrow Wilson on May 30th, 1916. Even though the flag was celebrated in various communities for years after Wilson's proclamation, it was not until August the 3rd, 1949, that President Truman signed an act of Congress designating June 14th of each year as National Flag Day. The United States Army also celebrates the Army birthday on this day. Do we have any Army men and women here among us? If you serve in the Army, raise your hand. Thank you. The week of June 14th is de designated as National Flag Week, and all citizens are urged to fly the American flag for the duration of that week. So keep old glory flying all this week, all right? Beverly, uh, that's all I have. Is that it? Or do you want to say something? All right. Beverly is going to cue what you have been waiting for. I know you weren't here for me. Uh, she's going to cue. Kids, are you ready? Kids of all ages. The ice cream truck is coming! All right, is it cut? All right. she's calling. She's putting in a, a call to the to the bat cave and we're gonna have some ice cream here in a minute. I'm so glad y'all came out. Uh, thank you for coming out and honoring our flag. We are actually going to be playing some uh, patriotic music throughout this event. And also, I believe, if I understood correctly, we'll be uh, playing the hymns of each uh, branch of the armed forces and recognizing those folks. I think we have some other things planned, but that's the main part of our program. Thank you very much.